And so when you, because uh, what I, I'm so now addicted to hearing no. I'm so, I do, I get addicted. Like when I, you, I show a script to somebody and they go, oh, well, it's too, it's, it's too funny, or it's not funny enough, whatever. I actually, I start to feed off of that. I really do. I'm like, oh yeah, just watch me. Do you still have that, like, just watch me? Like, oh, all the time, all yeah. the time. Yeah, and I mean, the thing, you know, it's not like, I've ever reached a point where people say carte blanche, here, do whatever you want to. I mean, I, I, you know, even after Remains, I had to struggle and I had to sell and I had to work like crazy to get anything produced again. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I sort of accept the fact that, that most of the people in power in theaters in this country are, are very, very afraid. They're very fearful people. Mm -hmm. And that, um, you know, I upset them. I have always upset people in the theater, even, even when, you know, when the shows do well, in a way it upsets them even more because then all the stuff they said about how no one will ever accept this and no one will ever like it becomes untrue and then that brings what they actually do into question. You know? mm -hmm. So a lot of them just like to avoid talking about that entirely. So after, so it's a hit, people mm -hmm. are going to see it, it's lining up, then what happens? What happens? My, um, my boyfriend at the time goes to Stratford to be in the Young Company that summer and I go out to be his Stratford wife while mm. he's doing it and they're doing the Changeling uh, and I hate Stratford. <laughs> it's like, where, where, where the, what, what it, is this like a Shakespeare Disneyland or something? Mm. Not only that, but like everybody in the festival is acting like they're doing Broadway or the West End or something because they're a hit in Stratford and it's like, People, nobody knows who you are outside of this little enclave. Do you mm. not understand that? But the kind of, um, and one of our uh, old English homosexuals, of which there's been a whole string, was running Stratford at the time in the very precious kind of uh, condescending to Canadians, I found, kind of way. The whole thing kind of creeped me out. But while I was there, I wrote The Ugly Man, which was my adaptation of The Changeling, because mm. I thought, well, my follow-up to Remains is going to, whatever I do, it's never going to please anyone. So why don't I do something really off the wall? So I did The Ugly Man, adaptation of The Changeling. Uh, really cool play, I think. We did it in Calgary, we did it in Edmonton. What was your take on it? What was your take on The Changeling? Um, well, I did kind of a camp version of it, set mm -hmm. in, a, in a kind of present day, non-existent world. Mm -hmm. And it was very uh, reeked of pop culture. It referenced Star Wars and uh, Betty and Veronica comics and Superman. It was very violent and ended with the uh, stage awash in blood and money. Uh, very sexual. At the time, it gets done a lot at, at universities because it is an adaptation of a classic, mm -hmm. but it's a show of style. It's a show about style. There's a real style to it in the writing and has to be in the production. And especially in those days, we didn't have a lot of directors who understood something like style, mm -hmm. particularly in Toronto. They read it here in Toronto and didn't get it at all, like did mm -hmm. not get it at all. So what happened to it? Uh, it got published, it gets mm -hmm. done, it's there. It's one of those, you know, lesser plays that people are always kind of, oh, that's a weird one, where do we fit that in the canon? But then, and so you're in Stratford, you write this play, but then what happens? Well, then Remains takes off. Then mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's going to be on in New York and they're going to do it in, uh, in Toronto and I'm doing my own production in Edmonton. <clears throat> and for the next two or three years, I mean, that's literally my job is either opening remains or going to openings of remains or doing interviews about remains and I'm being banned in like Virginia because they did it there and the police didn't like it and there are mm -hmm. uh, uh, Chicago, the, um, the uh, what do they call them, the, the people, the, the cops, who go, the vice squad, mm -hmm. the vice squad is there opening night because yeah. they're sure we're going to commit some kind of crime by pe actually having people have sex on stage and stuff like that. So this mm -hmm. whole kind of urban legend is growing around the show mm -hmm. and I've got money coming in and people, are, people want to make it into a movie. You know, people are like, how can we make this into a movie? How can we get the movie rights for this? And I'm saying, well, until we open in New York, nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we open in Chicago. Jim opens his show here with Brent Carver and Lenore Zan and that really wonderful cast. And they run for a year and a half sort of here and there, everywhere. Like, everybody is going through that show, and it's just always, at, you know, it's at the Poor Alex, then it's at Theatre Pass Mirai, and then mm -hmm. it's at Factory, and it's being done in all these different spaces mm -hmm. so they can keep it going because there's an audience for it. So literally, for the next, you know, two or three years after it opens in Calgary, mm -hmm. that's all I do is take care of remains. It's funny because it's hard to remember that uh, back in the, what, 80s and 90s, there was no gay culture in pop culture. There was no uh, will and grace. There was no like. It was just. It was something that was just so brand new and fresh. And mm -hmm. you know, the, the and 
the sexual energy of it was just so uh, dynamic and dangerous and raw, and it was just like a lightning bolt mm -hmm. through the community. And it's, I think it's hard, like it must have been hard, uh, th probably through the beginning of your career, just to be the first guy. It's like, th you know, you, you were breaking ground. It must have been very hard. I know? was breaking ground, but I mean, you know, Sky had buddies in bad times. It started mm -hmm. a year before I came to Toronto in 1981. So mm -hmm. he was doing his stuff, and there was also, um, just around the same time as Remains opens, um, uh, As Is, which is about uh, one of the early plays about AIDS, uh, opens right. as well. The Normal Heart opens. That's right. uh, key Exchange. There, are, there is, there is a, a thing going on in the theater at that time which gave me permission <clears throat> of queer voices being, uh, being exposed and people, people hearing them, uh, but not the way I was doing it. Like David McMillan in Unidentified Human Remains is not dying of AIDS, he's not HIV positive, and he's not struggling with coming out. Those were the three tropes that every queer piece of theater was about at that time. And so um, the fact that I wasn't writing that was both celebrated and uh, kind of denigrated at the same time. Like mm -hmm. people, a lot of people didn't think he was a good role model. This, mm -hmm. this you know, hedonistic, selfish, narcissistic, gay character who's, who's sort of running the play. They felt like he was a bad role model and I shouldn't be writing about him. And again, that's another uh, sort of accusation I've dealt with throughout my career is that mm -hmm. my characters are not role models. And I say, no, they're not role models. They're not meant to be role models. They're meant to be interesting, dynamic, Characters, if you want role models, go to someone who writes that kind of stuff, because that's not what I'm doing.